Have you ever wondered about the different types of blood disorders and diseases? You see, our blood, that vital life-sustaining fluid coursing through our veins, can unfortunately fall prey to a vast array of disorders. These disorders can be broadly categorized into two types, infectious and non-infectious. Infectious blood disorders, as the name suggests, are caused by infectious microorganisms. These culprits can be bacteria, viruses, fungi, or parasites, causing conditions like sepsis, bacteremia, viremia, fungemia, and parasitemia. On the other hand, non-infectious blood disorders are triggered by non-microbial causes, such as defects in the circulation or in blood components. Anemia, erythrocytosis, and leukopenia are some of the common non-infectious blood disorders. Now that's quite a lot of medical jargon, isn't it? But don't worry, we'll break it all down. So why don't we delve deeper into what these disorders are and how they affect us? First, let's explore infectious blood disorders. These disorders occur when infectious microorganisms or their products invade our bloodstream. Simply put, it's a blood infection and the culprits are known as blood pathogens. One of the most common infectious disorders is sepsis. This condition arises when bacteria, fungi, viruses or parasites are present in the blood, triggering clinical symptoms and the body's immune response. Sepsis can be a life-threatening situation as it can lead to severe inflammation and organ failure if not managed promptly. Next, we have bacteremia, which is the presence of bacteria in our blood or circulation. You may be familiar with some bacteria that cause bacteremia, such as Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, E. coli and Salmonella. Although bacteremia can be asymptomatic, it can also lead to severe infections if these bacteria reach vital organs. Viremia is another infectious blood disorder characterized by the presence of viruses in the blood. Some common viruses detected in viremia include HIV, hepatitis B and C, dengue virus and even the Ebola virus. Viremia can be particularly dangerous because many viruses can remain latent in the body for years, causing long-term health issues. Fungemia, as the name suggests, is the presence of fungi, including spores or vegetative forms like yeasts, in the blood. Common culprits are histoplasma, candida and aspergillus. Fungemia can be especially problematic for people with compromised immune systems, as they may struggle to fight off these fungal invaders. Finally, we have parasitemia, defined as the presence of parasites in the blood. Some common parasites detected in parasitemia include plasmodium, which causes malaria and trypanosoma, which causes sleeping sickness. Parasitemia can be particularly challenging to treat, as many parasites have complex life cycles and can develop resistance to antiparasitic drugs. As we can see, infectious blood disorders can be caused by a variety of microorganisms, each with their unique impact on our health. Understanding these disorders is crucial for prevention and treatment strategies, and it underscores the importance of maintaining a robust immune system to defend against these potential invaders. Now, let's turn our attention to non-infectious blood disorders. These are conditions that, unlike infectious blood disorders, are not caused by microbes such as bacteria or viruses. They can arise due to defects in blood circulation, issues with blood components, or other physiological abnormalities. One of the most common non-infectious blood disorders is anemia. This disorder occurs when there's a decrease in the oxygen carrying capacity of your blood. It's linked to a reduction in the quantity and function of red blood cells, or hemoglobin, the protein in your blood that carries oxygen. Astonishingly, it's estimated that one third of the world's population is affected by anemia. The causes of anemia are diverse, ranging from disturbances in the formation of red blood cells and hemoglobin to overbleeding or even intestinal inflammation. With over 400 types of anemia, this disorder is a complex and widespread issue. Some types include aplastic anemia, caused by damage to the bone marrow, and sickle cell anemia, a genetic disorder that affects the shape and function of red blood cells. Next, we have erythrocytosis, also known as polycythemia. This is a condition characterized by an increase in the number of red blood cells. Erythrocytosis can be primary, caused by an issue in the bone marrow, or secondary, caused by a disorder in a system other than the bone marrow. Having excessive red blood cells thickens the blood, making it harder for your heart to pump it through blood vessels. This can lead to various health complications, such as blood clots or strokes. Lastly, let's discuss leukopenia, a condition marked by a decrease in white blood cells count. 
White blood cells are crucial for fighting off infections, so a decrease in their number can leave the body more susceptible to illnesses. This condition can be caused by a wide range of factors, including certain medications, autoimmune diseases, or even severe infections. These non-infectious disorders, while not caused by external pathogens, still have significant effects on our health. So it's crucial to understand them as a step towards prevention and effective treatment. In this brief overview, we've covered a wide range of blood disorders, spanning from infectious ailments caused by bacteria, viruses, fungi and parasites, to non-infectious disorders often resulting from defects in the body's physiological processes. We've delved into the world of infectious blood disorders, where we explored conditions like sepsis, bacteremia, viremia, fungemia and parasitemia. Each of these conditions is characterized by the presence of certain pathogens in the blood, leading to a variety of symptoms and immune responses. These disorders, while diverse, all share a common thread. They are triggered by the invasion of harmful microorganisms in our bloodstream. We also ventured into the realm of non-infectious blood disorders, a broad category encompassing conditions like anemia, erythrocytosis and leukopenia. Anemia, for example, is a disorder where the blood's oxygen carrying capacity is reduced, and it's estimated that a staggering one-third of the world's population is affected by this disorder. On the other hand, erythrocytosis involves an increase in the number of red blood cells, while leukopenia is characterized by a decrease in white blood cells. Each of these non-infectious disorders stems from different physiological defects or disruptions in the body. The importance of understanding these blood disorders cannot be understated. Not only do they play a crucial role in our overall health, but they also provide valuable insights into the complex workings of our bodies. The blood, often seen as the life-giving river flowing through our veins, is much more than a simple carrier of oxygen and nutrients. It's a dynamic, ever-changing system that can significantly impact our health when disrupted. Understanding these blood disorders and diseases can help us take better care of our health and the health of those around us. Knowledge truly is power when it comes to our well-being.